Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here, and today I will review Muscle Town USA, written by my good friend Professor John D. Fair from the Stark Center in Austin, Texas. As we can read in the subtitle, uh, the book right here, the book is about Bob Hoffman, and you know you could almost say it's a biography, uh, almost, and yeah, definitely goes through the manly culture that. Bob Hoffman created with York Barbell. As Jan Todd, Professor Jan Todd describes in the back of the book right here, let me zoom that in. There you go. Muscletown USA will quickly be viewed as the standard reference work. Let me put that in the middle. For people interested in the modern history of weight training, it fills a large void in our knowledge of 20th Century American Sports by Jan Todd, University of Texas in Austin. I would have to agree, and that's a very nice compliment from Jan. The book basically, uh, going back now to the front, the book basically covers the life of the father of weightlifting, Bob Hoffman. Well, that's what he called himself, at least. I don't consider Bob the father of weightlifting, especially in, in US weightlifting. That would be accurately uh, George F. Jowett right that's who actually the the true father of American weightlifting is but Bob Hoffman nevertheless being uh, you as if you read this book you realize what an egomaniac he was not only him of course but Joe Weider and any other pioneer like that would have to be right uh, but um, that's what he called himself the father of weightlifting uh, the book covers of course Bob Hoffman his German lineage his relentless efforts in raising the level of competitiveness and professionalism of American weightlifting. There is absolutely no doubt about that. Um, his pioneering efforts in marketing barbells. I mean, th this guy was just relentless. Uh, marketing health foods. And of course, reaching the fame that he did and the height at the top of the iron game. Uh, if you have read the Muscle Mags, you'll realize that Joe Weida was never really and in the IFPB was never really at the at the level of York or Hoffman until much later until of course Hoffman and York's demise which of course the book covers as well Fair's book I have to admit is meticulously researched very well written with a, a wide range of photos that you can actually um, see you know the list of illustrations are listed in the book um, and of course, these go through the successive stories chronicled in the book, right? Uh, you can see Bob's first fitness uh, venture or business venture, I should say. Um, what he looked at 17, we'll go through some of these. And yeah, I mean, just he, he even, uh, you know, went in the war and all that kind of stuff. And um, uh, his uh, associations with certain bodybuilders, Dan Lurie, John Grimmick, etc., Joe Weider. There's... Um, a lot of stuff covered in the book. It's, it's a fantastic book. Uh, by the way, it's 418 pages long, and of course, it's available on Amazon and any good bookshop. Let's go through now the chapters. There are 10 chapters covered in three major sections the ascent to glory, the golden age of American lifting, which there really was. They were almost unbeatable during a certain time in history. And then this descent from this golden era, this descent from glory right and uh yeah fantastic the way it was written and i now will just go through briefly um you know just might flick through this book i'm going to also uh, of course go through the biography of bob hoffman soon in a new upcoming video but i would um now just like to briefly flick through this book just get past the introduction and, um, you know, just so you can get a good taste of what this book has to offer. Um, especially if you want to purchase it, which I highly recommend, especially if you're interested in reading more about the history of the Iron Game. As Bob Hoffman was instrumental in the development of weightlifting, powerlifting, uh, bodybuilding, uh, as well as health, fitness, nutrition. I mean, you name it. The, the, the man was, uh, he was the man, you know. <laughs> so, I uh, just want to really... Go through just a little bit here. We, we can see Bob, you know, he was a champion um, oarsman, and that's uh, he, he's, he's one of his greater influences was uh, George F. Jowett. 
which I'll go through in my video. That's him as a, a young lad and his first business venture, just cleaning the streets, you know. So, you know, he started off pretty early. It's his, um, his uh, sweetheart, Rosetta. She actually um, was featured on one of his magazines. One of the first women, actually, to be featured on, I think, the, the first image of a, mag of a female on a what you would consider almost a bodybuilding magazine although Hoffman's strength and health was more of a weightlifting magazine and yeah he also as you can see had a great influence in introducing women into the iron game and I'm just going through here you know, eventually of course the golden years there was Paul Anderson of American weightlifting uh, there's some great photos here of the Old York Gang, I'd like the Stan Lurie and his challenge. And his, there was John Grimmick, John Davis just then. That's the Old York Gang, you know, made of uh, European immigrants, basically, right? Or, or, or first generation Americans from European immigrants. So, all looking buff as, <laughs> buff as, like, look at those legs, Jesus, from all the front squats and no evidence of steroids if you look below, <laughs> if you know what I mean. No evidence at all. Um, these guys uh, had a full pack because uh, they were producing mostly their own testosterone. And yes, uh, I've talked about this stuff on my channel. I've talked about how there was some interest. The conversation was there. But I've also stated um, no true use, you could say, that led to any changes in their physique. And of course, that itself is covered in great detail in this book. The the um, initial use, or I should say, even the initial um, questioning, the, the um, conversation of testosterone, the inquiry is all here. It's, uh, I believe, around here. Yeah, it is this chapter right here, chapter six, where bodybuilders become aware of testosterone. And as I mentioned, in, by 1943, John, John Grimmick had already asked a doctor about methyl testosterone. Doesn't mean he took it, he was just asking. But by 1954, he definitely was taking a variety of substances, as I did on, as I explained in a recent video on the first bodybuilding stack, which was Syntrox, testosterone, and other chemicals that uh, John was trying when he was retired from competition. That's very important to know. Still, obviously, being competitive, wanting to push the edge further and further, he decided to try uh, steroids and other performance-enhancing drugs. All of that is covered in here, of course, and um, you know, it's a great, it's a great read. I really enjoyed reading this book. There's John Ziegler again, and yeah, I mean, when I read this, I really enjoyed the first half. The second half, you really start seeing how steroids. Uh, during the late 60s and early 70s, as well as the change in culture, especially in American culture, you have a change in society, sexual freedom, um, the breakdown of tradition and family, the introduction and rampant use of drugs overall, recreational and performance enhancing, and how all these vices just basically not only broke down York Barbell and Bob Hoffman, his own morale and his being, but you also see how that kind of influence has exacerbated itself even nowadays to the point where our own society is crumbling. Um, just reflecting here, you know, on the greater meaning of this book, you know, we have the origins in strength, in health, in fitness, and its gradual decline into unhealthiness and unfit drugged corrupted physiques corrupted minds obsessed with vice obsessed with sex obsessed with partying obsessed with feelings you know that's basically what our culture has become and that's what eventually broke york barbell just a reflection you know of course as i mentioned um uh, Hoffman had a great influence in powerlifting. Here is the late Terry Todd and his wife, of course, who still carry that flag. And in bodybuilding, 
um, the book continues, of course. And yeah, I mean, I, I just keep saying it. it was very sad to see how everything declined with drugs and our current culture. Um, and I'll talk more about it in my biography. Um, yeah, there's Hoffman getting older. Yeah. There's Jan Todd. Uh, deadlifting on national TV. God bless her. And um, that's one of, you know, I guess one of his uh, last photos of uh, <laughs> Bob Hoffman. Graying and old. Yeah, great, um, great read. I really enjoyed it. Learned a lot, and um, I highly recommend anybody that wants to look at the history of weightlifting, bodybuilding, nutrition, powerlifting, health, fitness, etc. Have a have a read of this. It's a it's a real eye opener. Anyway, I do hope you have enjoyed this review of Muscle Town USA by John D. Fair, and my comments. I'm sorry I veered off uh, on the problems of today, but um, really a lot of it has to stem with the Cultural Revolution from the 1960s. I really do believe that's when things, for a while, I mean, the Cultural Revolution introduced us to so many things, to variety, to options, to things that steered us away from conservatism, which in some ways were great because they were eye-opening, but I think everything just took over now. It's just gone way overboard, you know, and when things get out of balance, either the other side pushes back to bring things back in balance or everything topples over. That's where we are right now as in a civilization but again i'm just giving my opinions here um i don't want to get into politics or anything like that but um yeah i would say most people would at least most reasonable people may agree with with what i'm saying right now regarding our culture and civilization and how really that's the thing that i that i noticed also when i read read this book you really see how that counterculture not just brought bodybuilding the iron game all of it down in certain ways sure nutrition went up but you know the the dependency on drugs now and the iron game is just a reflection of how weak we've become you know where's our stoicism where is that that's what made men you know our resilience our willingness to fight our willingness to stand strong where is that you know where is that that's really something to reflect on. Where is our stoicism? You know, it's in, in many ways it's it's gone in most men. You know. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, I do hope you've enjoyed this review of Muscle Town USA by John D. Fair, available on Amazon, and I guess any good bookshop that would order it for you. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Leave me your comments. That's it for me. This is the Golden Era Book. I'm saying, bye for now. Head to www.goldenerabookum.com for the biggest range of classic old school bodybuilding books as ebooks, e magazines such as Iron Man and Reg Park Journal, high quality bodybuilding posters of the Golden Era stars, merchandise, and classic gym wear featuring Steve Reeves, Marvin Eder, John Grimmick, Reg Park, and many other Golden Era stars. For those wishing to build a classic physique, lose fat and build muscle, online training is also available. Collectibles such as rare autographed photos from the Golden Era stars are also available, and to collaborate, please get in touch. As a natural bodybuilder, it is imperative to know your own testosterone levels as they are a reflection of the anabolic environment created by your diet and training. I would highly recommend using the male hormone test kit from Let's Get Checked and make sure you use my code GOLDEN30 for a 30% discount. Again, the advantage of checking yourself regularly is that you will know how well your body is anabolically primed to put on the much desired muscle you are working for. Not all of us have the time to go to a gym or the opportunity to have a coach to teach us one-on-one -on -one. But with the Future Fitness app, it's like having a personal trainer in your living room. From February 11th onwards, you can try the Future Fitness app for only $19 for the first month. Think of what you can accomplish during that first month. So go on and hit my link at tryfuture.co slash geb to get started.
Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has. But to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the classic physique bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Deronda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles. But how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14-month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises. And of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for uh, getting into competition. It's just these, these three books, as I call it, the Classic Physique Bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.goldenerabookum.com.